I'm a huge fan of, of Aristotle and, and philosophy in general, and, and, and I always love this term that he said eudaimonia is a better word for happiness, because happiness just kind of says that you should just be happy, you should just be enjoying anything that happens, whereas Aristotle was like, eudaimonia is a little bit better, because it says that happiness should come with suffering and, and sacrifice. It's basically happiness with fulfillment. He said that happiness without fulfillment is failure. So I think when my head hits the pillow or I'm exhausted and I just I lay down on the sofa, so many athletes will understand this feeling. It's not happiness, it, it's eudaimonia that I just look back on the day and go, that was amazing. He's like, he's been given a gift to be able to see the life, see life through this lens of like, I can, I will. Because I think the majority of people are like, oh, I have to go to the gym, I have to do this. And it sounds like his optimism is, you know, in reverse of what we should all be practicing, really. People would attribute Ross's achievements to his physicality. And obviously, there's going to be an element of that. And he's obviously genetically gifted. But everything that I'm gathering is it's actually his mindset, his resilience, his optimism. You're punk, this is a weird way for you to spend a morning watching a grown man loop up his arm for his. <laughs> yeah, home is also training camp for me. As, as soon as we moved here, I just wanted to kit it out with uh, saunas, ice baths. I've got an infinity pool in there as well and, and my weights rack. So it's, um, and, and, and that's, I like it. I like, I like it that way because the lines are kind of blurred and I can, I can finish a huge session and then just the, the kitchen you know, and, and a, a bowl of porridge and a smart bar is, uh, is all of 30 seconds away. I, I know because I've timed it. This is my favourite corner, I'm going to be honest. I just, I fill it with everything that is PhD. This is basically everything I need before, during or after my swims, which right now consists of breakfast fuel. I am a connoisseur. Like I said, if you don't have an entire tub of protein bars, then you, you need to up your game. In my opinion, birthday cake, in order, the best. Close second, cookies and cream. Third, blondie, and then something a little bit different. If I'm absolutely hanging up, just smashed a 20, 30K swim, protein flapjacks. There you have it. That is my top, top three with a bonus fourth in the flapjack. So um, I'm Hester, I am Ross's girlfriend. We've been together for about over ten and a half years now. And um, yeah, I think I just support his crazy adventures when he wants to do them. <laughs> just because he really liked to do these crazy things, it was just one of those, like, if Ross wanted to do something like tow a mini and he had a harness on and he wanted me to get in the car and navigate him or, you know, drive the car in my pyjamas at midnight, that's what we were going to do. So I'd, I don't know why I didn't actually question it at the time, to be quite honest with you. That's a good question. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, I, I know it takes a special sort of someone to to put up with me. Like, I'm not house trained. Uh, I am messy. Uh, and, and exactly that point, that, that if I woke up in the morning and... <laughs> oh, this is going to make me sound so bad, but, like, there was a house fire. <laughs> I would just be like, I've got to swim. <laughs> I've got to... And honestly, genuinely, she'd just go... <laughs> I'll take care of it. Yeah, he'd probably just go, babe, and I would just probably have to sort that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes that sort of a mindset, I think, like to, unfortunately, and I say that honestly, unfortunately, it takes that sort of a mindset that everything else has to um, play second fiddle to getting your miles in that day. And uh, I'm, just, I'm so lucky that I have amazing people around me who allow me and tolerate me to, to, to do that. Even with like setbacks, say there's, you know, there's been a date change of a swim or there's been a date change with anything that's going on with a different project, for example. I've just never seen anybody just get out of bed and have the motivation to just keep on going and making sure that whatever he wants to do, it just happens. So yeah, it, it's quite nice to see actually, because that motivates me. Just to be so honest, like there was a few people who, who probably distanced themselves from me after Loch Ness. I understand why as well, riddled with cellulitis, hypothermia. People are like, I do not want anything to do with that, that particular athlete. 
PhD, the very next day, packages arrived. Just recovery, ZMA, glutamine, everything I needed. And then within a week, we were sitting down as well, looking at prehab, rehab, and, and gearing up for the test. It's, pe people don't see that. They, they don't see that on, online. And um, that's why I'm so grateful for this, to actually sort of shine a little bit of a light on that, because it, it's just, it's never common knowledge, the amount that goes behind the scenes. The first time that I met Ross actually was, I think he had just finished the, the swim around Britain. Um, I met him at Old Trafford, actually, Manchester United's football ground. And he was telling us the story of, of that swim and all the complications that went on. And I just thought, what a, what a guy, what a crazy guy, but also what a mentally strong guy. Um, and it was quite inspirational, actually, because it reminded us all in the room that day that anything is possible if you just believe in it and you commit to it and you commit to that goal and get really behind it. Um, and I think sometimes, we, because I work with athletes quite a lot, you almost take it for granted how special they really are. But when you take a step back and reflect on the challenges that these individuals are doing, it, it's pretty incredible. And, and that's why there's only a small percentage of the population that truly are world-class athletes. So, so James Morton, oh, I said it before, he's just, he's a Jedi grandmaster of nutrition. Like what he's done and what he continues to do is just, it's amazing. And I think I'm, um, in so many ways, like I said, I, I this exist on the sort of outside of conventional sports. So I'm very much like almost the, the black sheep in the PhD family. And I just, I just come to him with like weird questions. Um, anything from, you know, talking about, Digestive issues after 50 hours, like neurotransmitters, chemical signals in the brain. Oh, I was hallucinating after 60 hours. Like, what can I do to combat that? And, and James has always got an answer. And, and it's backed by thousands of studies. He's, he's amazing. And I think um, that's been one of the biggest things, that you could be the most genetically gifted athlete in the world, you, and you just, you just won't achieve what you want to. They say that training is the realization of one's genetic potential. And I think it's nutrition as well. So training and nutrition are the realization of one's genetic potential. You can be amazing with all of like the gifts that biology, physiology, and everything could give you. Doesn't mean anything unless you've got a team around you can actually help you realize that. What Ross brings to the party is kind of an athlete who encapsulates all of those different physical demands. Incredible strength, but also incredible endurance. And I have to say, from his professionalism towards embracing sports science, and in particular, sport nutrition, you're looking at someone who really looks for all of these different marginal gains, but actually also looks at the basics, whether that's fueling correctly or consuming enough protein correctly. Everything that encapsulates real world-class performance nutrition, he epitomizes that, and, and he lives that daily. The fact that he is supplementing with something like omega-3 is, you know, invaluable because omegas are really important for brain function. Our brain is essentially made of DHA, which is one of the fatty acids in omega-3. So supplementing with something like two to three grams of EPA and DHA on a daily basis is going to improve cognitive function. And we've seen that it actually helps modulate the brain in terms of our mood, the way that we think, our brain processing speed, um, and actually can help with sort of like depressive symptoms as well. He's um, He's definitely going to have impaired psychomotor activity in the way that he makes decisions because that becomes deeply impaired when we are tired. I and mean, you know that from when you've had a bad night's sleep. Um, you know, lack of sleep is one of the most detrimental things that we can go through for a prolonged period of time. But, you know, making sure that you've got the buffering in there, like, you know, all the hydration, all the supplementation, the, the lead up to it. But he's built it up so much that his, you know, dopaminergic drive is going to be, su you know, super high because he just is who he is. Obviously, a big factor in this particular swim, because it's a non-stop swim, is just the sleep deprivation. And um, I remember I was actually speaking to a good friend of mine who's a world record holder, ocean rower, amazing. And I remember I said to him, how do you train for sleep deprivation? Should I practice it? And he sort of laughed at me and he just said, no. He said, it's like having a baby. Like, you don't practice sleep deprivation. You just wait for the baby to arrive and then you deal with it. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But now, having done enough of those swims, it's just knowing that hallucinations or, or perceptual distortions, as they're called, you know, they're gonna start to kick off. And as they do, you just, you make peace with it. You know, so when you're swimming and uh, like a unicorn fish starts like 
tipping their top hat to you. You're just like, hey, morning, how are we? And you just, you know it's coming. Um, and you just, yeah, like certainly 40 hours in, you just, you just put your goggles on and enjoy the show. And I know that sounds really weird, but you just have to be comfortable with the fact that beyond that point, you, you, you basically can't trust your own eyes, your own mind, like, it, and that's okay. As long as the arms are still moving and the legs are still kicking, that's okay. And anything else that pops up, just uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> I think because I'm quite realistic and probably more of the planner, I'm always thinking a bit more, not, not negatively, but how is that going to affect or how is that going to impact on his swim, his health, his mental health? Whereas Ross just kind of goes for it. So yeah, I was a bit concerned about it. And I don't think people realise what the repercussions of these swims are. Probably because why, why would you really? Nobody's ever wanting to swim in Loch Ness for 72 hours before and <laughs> lived to tell the tale. The first thing that he said to me when he was in hospital the next day, instead of going, right, OK, I'm going to get better, you know, we're going to take a bit of time off. No, all he said was, babe, I've got another idea and I know how we're going to do it again better next time. And I just remember going, no, we're having six months off. We don't need to do it again. But that was his answer, basically. So it wasn't like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I can't do this again. It was when I'm going to do it again. It's going to be like this. And he thought about it within 24 hours. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go to, like, a complete exhaustion. I think sometimes a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to go to my arms full. Like, no, 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 no. There will just be a point where I go, that feels nice. Um, whether that is because of the distance, whether it's a combination of the distance and what we've raised for charity. Uh, maybe we'll say we've just hit, you know, a million views on our charity page. And I'll go, that's good. You know, I can, I can, I can go to bed and uh, this chapter's kind of closed. And, and like I said, that, that's very intrinsic. Uh, and you'll probably, yeah, you'll, you'll probably see. There'll be a moment where it's just like, inner peace. It's just, that feels good. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I don't, definitely don't think this is the last challenge, no. No, not for quite some, no.